Well, I told you yesterday that many Southampton people had relatives on the Titanic. Well, I've just been passed a little note there from our captain, who says that his uncle, Tom Knowles, sailed on the Titanic and happily survived. He was on the line from Mexican, because he was a passenger and cargo ship, and he left to join the Titanic. He was a chief stoker, and what he did was the dockhead jump, which in 1912, meant that you came down with all your gear, sat alongside the gangplank, and hoped, just hoped, that there was going to be a place for you on the ship if the, the members of the crew that had been engaged had, didn't turn up. In this case, somebody didn't turn up, so he went and sailed on the Titanic. His wife didn't even know that he'd sailed on, sailed on her until after she had sunk. Yes. Captain yes. Smith, yes. Edward Smith, <laughs> he was a uh, great, great uncle. <laughs> Because of course my mother knew him very well and we heard all about him being children, so of course right from being children we've always been very interested. My husband's right in the key position on the front there with his cine camera. <laughs> I'm here because my husband is very keen all on the Titanic and the story and so I come along with him to enjoy the weekend here. And this is a very historic moment, isn't it? Uh, my name's Colin Westland Garnet, which I'm afraid is rather a mouthful. And we are from northeast Aberdeenshire. Uh, my uncle, James Fraser, was the third engineer on the Titanic. The significance between Aberdeenshire and Southampton is that the family, as families did, living together in those days, all moved down in 1908. My grandfather was master man and he was sailing out of Malaysia. So when James uh, joined, the White Star, the whole family came into Southampton, you see. He was brought across from uh, New York, especially, as you know, to get onto the Titanic was a very prestigious situation. And he was brought back specially for this. They were all, I understand, overqualified. Now, the astonishing to me, I mean, this is obviously not only a bit of history, uh, very significant history, uh, it's also very much a bit of family history, as you'll appreciate. James Fraser, the third engineer on the Titanic, he went down at the age of 29. 30 years later, his son, with the same name, the same age, was torpedoed on convoy duty and went down almost at the identical situation, the identical position in the Atlantic. I, I find this quite remarkable. My name is Martin, my middle name is Lightoller, final name is Smith, and uh, Commander Lightoller was my mother's second cousin. In other words, it was her father's uh, brother. And uh, I did meet him, uh, I was very young at the time, and uh, I've always followed the, uh, the story, I've always uh, been interested in it. I've passed the name on to my uh, young son as well, as his middle name. And uh, I think the thing that I remember most was the method of his survival because he was a Christian scientist, my mother is a Christian scientist, and the belief of the Christian science is that your body is above your spirit. And when the Titanic went down, he was apparently sucked, he jumped overboard as it slid down. He was apparently sucked towards the funnel and uh, as the water reached the engines, so it created an enormous explosion, it blew him out. And he was in those waters for 20 minutes or so before he was rescued. And he puts down his survival to this um, belief in Christian science, uh, Christian science. And he float, he was able to float, his body able to float above the water and ignore the pain. So that's uh, one of the things I do remember most. I have something in common with uh, a couple of people here that uh, I'm also a survivor of a another shipwreck, which was the Herald of Free Enterprise, uh, with a loss of life, 193. Um, quite a hu uh, big proportion of the crew, 50% uh, died on that night, the same as the Titanic in Southampton here. A lot of the crew perished on that night. I, I once spoke to Bertram Dean, I, I met in London, and uh, I said to him, have you coped over the years? Did you, you know, suffer in any way, or did it keep you have nightmares or anything like this because I wanted to know foresee my own future if you like and uh, he said I, I don't know he said I was only two at the time I can't remember a thing about it 
Um, so really, I, I, I believe that we, you know I, I sort of remember it. I recall it um, quite often, really. And I suppose, in a, in a fitting way, it's uh, my own. It's part of remembering the the crew and passengers on on the day in question, really. So, um, which uh, now now over a period of years since the Herald was capsized, um, I've come to terms with it. She went grey, her hair went grey overnight pretty well, and she was 19. My aunt herself would never ever talk about the Titanic, and she wouldn't help when they were making the film. She didn't want to know any more about it at all. There have been many films made of Titanic, and this one with Clifton Webb and Barbara Stanwyck and a very young Robert Wagner was made in the 1950s. It was a fair success, but it was nowhere near as successful as the next one, which is A Night to Remember, the very famous one by Walter Lord. This is probably the most famous film ever made and will probably remain so. Walter Lord had great access to, I think it was over 60 survivors and their recollections that he used for the book helped obviously with the book itself, but they were also used, uh, or a lot of them were used as technical advisors in the film itself to ensure accuracy. Even today, I mean, this film is, is an amazing film when you look at it. My children and I love it. I think the main interest in Titanic has been the mystique. Um, when Dr. Ballard found the ship, some of the mystique was gone. People seemed to expect to see her sitting bolt upright on the seabed with all her funnels, which of course is ludicrous. But then they found her in two pieces, which proved parts of uh, some of the witnesses' accounts of the time, who said that she went in half, and most people didn't believe that either. Since Ballard has found her, more and more people, I find, have got interested, especially younger people. Children are doing projects all over the world, both here, America, Canada, all over the place, on Titanic. We find we get up people approaching us from schools, literally worldwide, for just information on the ship, which is one of the reasons we did the book, so that the school libraries especially can refer to the book with all the newspaper accounts, instead of spending a long time doing research at various libraries. But it's a wide age, age group. It literally covers people from, oh, I don't know, children from three or four years old that watch A Night to Remember or something like that, up to adults in their 70s, 80s, some of who can actually recollect seeing the ship sail down Southampton Water. The interest is tremendous. It varies literally from books, films, newspapers, um, music, chinaware, to collecting people's personal accounts and collecting signatures of the survivors on postal covers, postcards, and things like that. The interest has grown so much over the last few years that there are one specialist auctioneer in London who have annually a Titanic sale, and that creates tremendous interest, a lot of media attention as well. We find, because our shop is in Northern, which was one of the main areas of the crew members, or where the crew members lived, that we get quite a lot of people coming in just for a chat, and they say, oh, my great uncle was on the Titanic, or my grandfather was on the ship, and some were saved, some went down with the ship. And we can guarantee, I, I should think, at least once a month, somebody fresh comes in and is associated with the Titanic. Uh, the classic one is the lady who came in one day and said that she has a set of Titanic chinaware, you know, a tea set. Oh, I didn't believe her. She described the china, and then it turned out that her parents ran a guest house in Southampton. Some of the Titanic's crew, especially the uh, petty officers and officers, were billeted with various families or hotels and places like that. And the second steward, in this case, took the family on a, a tour of the ship. The mother commented about how nice the china was, and just before Titanic sailed, box arrived with the tea service. And the tea service is still here, somewhere in Northern, within a mile or so of where we're standing today, all wrapped up. And hopefully, you know, it's the kind of thing that ought to go into a museum. So the Hampton Museum have got a good collection of Titanic items. It varies from uh, Captain Smith's